So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm Dave Shoemaker, and I'm a member of the faculty here at the School of Library and Information Science. And I'd like to welcome you to the second and final colloquium for the spring 2010 term. And um, our topic tonight is Alternative Search Tools, Why Researchers Need to Go Beyond Google. And our presenter is Ran Hock, who is an independent consultant with his business online strategies and trainer and author and uh, most particularly uh, has just published the Extreme Searchers Internet Handbook 3rd Edition. And we were just talking about why it um, was delayed or why it was sort of hidden in the Amazon search results until very recently. <laughs> Mainly because so. they don't have their librarians working for them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the simple answer. Um, <clears throat> Ran it has been in the profession uh, in many different capacities. I believe started as an academic librarian at Penn, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, and very good. has been at OCLC, I believe. No, uh, Dialog. Dialog, and uh, and now with uh, with his own business, just goes to show you the kinds of career changes and diverse opportunities that can be open to librarians. So, Brian, we're delighted you're here and look forward to your presentation. Well, I'm invited. And uh, I want to keep this uh, informal. Uh, so at any point you have the urge to ask a question, feel free to. Uh, the, um, it's going to be available in video format, but also I put the slides online if you want that. And there's, I have a page I keep up anyway of uh, links to alternative search engines so you can make use of uh, any or all of that uh, as you go along. So uh, uh, don't hesitate to jump in. It's not going to be particularly academic sounding. I won't use too many four-syllable words. One of the things I appreciate of various reviews that I've gotten is uh, what kind of struck me. It said, uh, the book is very readable in spite of his academic background. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's uh, kind of my uh, aim in a bit there. Uh, so uh, let's talk about what we mean by alternative uh, engines. And really, there are basically two categories. And the second one is what I'm going to focus on here. Uh, the other general web search engines that are alternatives to Google as general web search engines. And right now, it's really down to the big three. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, and then those that uh, cover a specific kind of data content, which is what we'll mainly be focusing on uh, uh, today. So uh, the, uh, why use them? Well, they may have content that Google doesn't. Now, that's getting harder and harder for them as Google is getting more and more content uh, there. Matter of fact, with regard to uh, alternative search engines, I would, if I had much money to invest, I wouldn't be putting much into alternative search engines because Google really, you know, it, it has that momentum and it has that critical mass in so many areas and in so many areas of uh, expertise that it's getting harder and harder, I think, for uh, alternatives to be successful. But I think we'll still see them around for, uh, for a while there. Um, they use different ranking algorithms. Now, this is more so for the general web search engines in terms of applicability than it is for the uh, other format search engines there, but it is still true because still, and if, you know, I think it's healthy every once in a while for somebody, if you have that extra minute to, sometime during a search, you know, to jump, just jump over to a second search engine, compare what you got on the first couple pages of Google, what you got on the first couple pages of the other search engine, and you'll find there's surprisingly little overlap there. Now, if you look at the first two or three hundred pages, the percentage overlap increases because it's those top 200 or whatever are going to be more likely the same, but you still, in the first page or two, you get very significant differences in ranking. And Google has very good ranking, which is one of the reasons why it became so popular. But on the other hand, it isn't going to work as well in every single search as it will in the cases of some other search engines there. Uh, particularly with regard to those that address particular formats such as video, audio, those types of things, uh, they have specialized search features that are really focused on that type of uh, content that Google may not have and the consequent searching that uh, uh, goes along with that. Uh, for certain types of content, they may be simpler to use, easier to use, especially when you get to know them a little bit. And as I go through and look at the uh, 
uh, examples I'm going to work with. Uh, I, I'm going to go along and point out these examples of these. Now, I'm probably going to speed up considerably toward the end because I'll run out of unique examples to show you there, and we'll look a little more in later ones in terms of their, uh, some specific functionality they have and just acquaint you with them there. But uh, as you get to know them, as with so many tools, getting to know, know the tool is an important part of uh, making the most use of it and making it easier to use. And along the same lines, their presentation and the formatting of the results. Sometimes we just like one format, one presentation more than another. That's a good reason for using some of them. And finally, though we may love Google, we may not be inclined toward the concept of a benevolent di dictator. And uh, we kind of, I think we all want to go occasionally, at least for the, the underdog there. And uh, Google is definitely not the underdog these days. So uh, uh, that's, I think, one reason for at least trying them now and then. Just a, one screen, really, about the other big ones. Uh, uh, Yahoo, Bing, Ask. I hesitate to even put Ask. Ask has really gone downhill uh, in terms of the quality of what it does, its uniqueness, uh, and they're wandering through the realm of their uh, uh, whatever their current marketing people are telling them to uh, do there. Uh, at one point, they'd even decided for about two weeks to become the woman's search engine. I don't know whether you recall that period in Ask's history. That was just before their NASCAR search engine, where they were featured, honestly. Yeah, they never heard the story of, you all remember Northern Light? OK, you may recall they bought a NASCAR car. Uh, within three months, they were going downhill. With six months, they weren't even functioning out there. Uh, NASCAR, you know, the Ask people should have some search engine corporate memory. No, don't buy a cask, uh, get into the NASCAR thing there. Uh, there. But anyway, um, I'm not really going to focus on those, that, uh, but the, these are the types of things that cause them still to be relevant uh, there uh, in terms of using them. Yeah, but instead, we're going to look at those that cover specific kinds of content, images, videos, audio, podcasts, blogs, and RSS, and I throw those together because they so naturally go together there, news, discussion groups, and people. So we're going to look at some examples of alternative tools for uh, each of those categories here. And I'm going to go back and forth in a screen or two, and we're going to then begin to look at uh, some of these themselves rather than just the slides there. Uh, first of all, and probably the most popular among all of those, although video is probably neck and neck with them in terms of popularity of these alternative format engines, uh, the image sources. And there are quite a few image sources out there, but right now, and this is more anecdotal, uh, than uh, any hardcore data on this, but uh, uh, as I've been you know, checking them, I keep an eye on numbers and so on, but it's hard to uh, identify good numbers for this. But I think I'm fairly safe in saying the largest searchable image sources on the web are available on three different engines. And one point I'll make right with the second one here, uh, Flickr, is people don't necessarily think of it as a search engine, but it very definitely is. It's not just a place where you can put your photos, but more importantly, for many people, I think, it is a search engine because of its nature there, and uh, Yahoo. Uh, with uh, these occasional, I'll throw in, a, throw in a couple more general tips there. I recommend when searching these uh, image search engines, uh, start off with no more than two words because of the, the kind of indexing that's done on this uh, makes it really risky to go beyond that in the beginning. If then when you need to narrow it down, go ahead and narrow it down. But most of them don't have very good indexing attached to them. And I'll mention as we go along some places where we're seeing more of a movement toward that. I don't know how successful it will be, but uh, fortunately there is at least a thinking about indexing uh, there. And with some of these, they're going to differ as well. Uh, for example, with Google. Uh, Google will give you very large numbers for images. You look at, you do a search on a specific topic on Google Images, you do a search on these others, Google's numbers are going to be larger. But basically what it does, if you look real closely, examine it, it will take almost every word on the page and index every image on that page under that particular word. Now, I'm not sure they absolutely do that, but from the little bit of experimenting I've been doing with it, uh, uh, that, that's what it amounts to. So the chance of, of false drops are very, very high with that but they have large numbers. That's one of the reasons why it's hard to compare the actual uh, uh, numbers of these. Uh, one other thing that people search for uh, frequently is uh, for pictures of people. If the last name is uncommon, just try the surname without the given name for the same reason as the other one. It's, you're going to lose a lot of capabilities out there, a lot of your recall if you uh, 
uh, start too specific there. So a bit about Flickr. I'm going to use Flickr. It's a great, great resource, great place to put your photos, uh, and a um, um, great place to search them there. And it has search capabilities we're going to look at in just a moment. Uh, uh, search box, advanced search pa page. You'll find actually most of the tools we're going to look at do have an advanced search page of some type. In some cases, it's something they call advanced search. In many cases, it's an advanced search that built, that's built into a re uh, results page. Where you get results, you can then narrow them down there. Uh, you can search by keywords, by date, and so on. Uh, it's indeed, one other thing about it, this is kind of an interesting thing a lot of people don't realize about this. Uh, it is also an easy place to get permissions to use an image. So if you're doing a newsletter or something and you want to legitimately get some image that you can throw on there, uh, keep Flickr in mind. Uh, because all you have to do is ask the person, their name is attached to it, you can send the person an email quickly and easily, and most of us who have pictures out there are flattered to have somebody use them. And uh, just a little personal experience with that, I, uh, uh, which really brought home to me the reach of some of these tools. Uh, I was um, in uh, Geneva, and uh, Geneva is a beautiful place, but once you've been there three or four times, you kind of exhaust the possibilities of Geneva itself. So I decided I was going to trip, took a take a trip, so I took a trip to Guerre, where they make the cheese. And so I was taking some pictures. And what I usually do when I travel, I put the pictures on Flickr, and I send an email to my wife and say, take a look at where I was today, and so on. And it works very nicely there. And so I had these pictures, the, the sample factory that they have there, right at the train station at Guerre. And it's impressive because you look down this uh, uh, refrigerated, big refrigerated room, and you look down these, and you see hundreds and hundreds of cheese wheels in this aisle, and hundreds and hundreds of cheese wheels there. I got a message. Uh, can, I, can we use your picture? Uh, we do a blog, and we have heard reports that people are smuggling contraband through cheese wheels, and we need a picture of a cheese wheel we want to put on our blog. So I did that. So I, I said, sure, go ahead. I thought, okay, this one's done. A year later, I was in uh, uh, Vienna, uh, Austria, and uh, I stayed at a hotel I hadn't stayed at before, took some pictures, what do I do? An online travel guide sends me, because it's on, I put on a Flickr, online travel guides, can we use your picture of Hotel Coomer? Sure you can. The point is not that my photos are that great, because they aren't. The, photo, it's, the point is that these really have tremendous reach with these, and consequently, with all the people that are out there taking pictures, you have a tremendous database of pictures that can be used uh, with this. So keep in mind for uh, images uh, or for permissions there. Uh, one other thing about th using this as a tool for finding pictures versus some of the other images, because they're taken by tourists who are uploading tens of thousands of pictures a day, I think is the, the number that's associated with that, they're very recent photos many times. So if you want a nice recent photo, uh, you can probably uh, probably find them there. Uh, but, and just uh, to uh, take a quick uh, peek here, also tagging can result in uh, uh, very good uh, search results with these. And the same is going to be true for some of the other tools that we're looking at there. Now I will confess, when the concept of tags for this kind of thing first came along, I wasn't really excited about it, the, whatever it was 10, 15 years ago. Because I grew up with controlled vocabulary. Descriptors were better than identifiers, uh, and so on there. Uh, but I really have been a convert to tagging. And even though there isn't the consistency that you have with controlled vocabulary, it still can, still can really work very, very well uh, there. So uh, the tagging that, that is added to these really uh, can have quite an effect there. Uh, yes? Uh, I have a question. I take my pictures to Picasso. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I want to send them to my local paper, mm -hmm. and I, they kept having trouble with the resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is that in Flickr? Is that uh, accessible? Can you save them at, at uh, high resolution? I honestly don't recall. Uh, because typically what you're going to be seeing is not a particular high resolution because they recommend that you limit it to, you know, four or five hundred pixels by four or five, something like that. So they're, they're not going to be as high resolution uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, so I suspect that, uh, I, I don't honestly know the complete answer to that, but uh, uh, there may be an option that I don't know about. So, uh, w On any of these tools, uh, look around for uh, the, uh, let's see, uh, uh, 
Uh, advanced search options there. And in most cases, you'll either find an advanced search link or, and this has both of them, you'll find advanced search link and then some other narrowing features that are available. That's one thing that's pretty consistent about uh, these engines. They provide one or the other or both of those uh, with that kind of, uh, uh, as a way of narrowing it down there. Uh, here, for example, relevance, recent, int interesting, those categories there, uh, small, medium, large, and then you go over to advanced search, you'll have a number of other uh, search capabilities on there. Although with the uh, images, it's not a whole lot uh, that's relevant that they could do. Uh, uh, I, I think, uh, well, anyway, I'll come back to that. Um, so Flickr, second, it, now here we're going to one of the databases built into one of the big ones, Yahoo, but you, if you're, whenever you're talking about these types of formats, you really do have to hit on the big ones as well there. Uh, so just a few words about Yahoo Images. And with Yahoo Images, uh, billions of images, as they say, uh, from their own web database, uh, and also images from Flickr, from Yahoo, news, and some other sources. You're going to find that one of the things about the content of many of these is what kind of alliances and what kind of sort of subsidiaries they have. So, for example, for, for Yahoo, the fact that it has Yahoo News, you're going to find images from their news partners in there. Uh, and uh, that's one of the things to keep an eye on with this, and it's hard to keep up with. Back a uh, long, long time ago when I was a reference librarian, uh, there were some tools, particularly in some areas, that the more I got to know them, the more little detail that I knew, and the little details about the co their coverage particularly, that you know, I only needed that information once a year, but uh, once a year that I needed that information. Two slight difference between similar looking reference tools there. And, if you're, when you work with hard copy tools, it's sometimes pretty easy to do, but particularly with regard to the kinds of content and so on, it's not as obvious with these, but I recommend that you keep an eye on these, and one of the reasons we're trying them out, when you find those little differences there, that's when these can become particularly useful there. Uh, a lot of map search capabilities uh, that are pretty typical, one or more phrases in the search box. Uh, in most of these, you're pretty safe assuming, although it won't be true in every case, that ands are gonna be implied, uh, you're pretty safe in assuming that quotation marks can be used for phrases, and you're maybe not quite as con uh, sure that you'll be able to use a minus for a not, but doesn't do any harm, give it a try. Uh, usually I'll just give it a try rather than trying to go through the documentation to figure out what these uh, uh, have there. And it often works uh, enough there. And it does have that advanced search page that allows some uh, uh, additional things uh, with that. Um, the uh, over to video. Uh, for video, keep in mind, it is really becoming popular uh, for some specific things like how-tos. How many have used video for finding a how-to? Oh, good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty typical these days. That, that's the place I go for how-to things. It, you name it. You want to learn, if you want to learn how to yodel, which I threaten my kids I'll do when I retire, uh, the, uh, they've they got about eight or ten for that. My son broke his ukulele. So we'll have to pull up. I wanted to get it fixed, though. How to string a ukulele, wham. There it is, just what I need there. You name it, you want to know how to do it, there's going to be a video for it most likely there, and probably many to choose from. Uh, there are also very good resources for interviews and lectures, and more and more academic institutions, and some you know, very major ones, MIT and so on, are uh, putting a lot of lectures on. Uh, these as videos. So keep that in mind for some of those types of things. But it's not just the fun things that are out there. Not that those lectures couldn't be fun, but uh, the, uh, uh, it, it's not just the fun things that are out there. It's got a good resource for some high quality, uh, well vetted information there. And then of course also from the other end, not, not so high quality necessarily nor vetted, uh, but uh, I find that it's much easier for me to watch out The Office uh, on through one of these tools than it is to try to schedule my time so I can see it uh, uh, otherwise there. So uh, keep that uh, in mind there. And YouTube is the uh, um, probably the best known uh, all of all these. Um, in the main search box, it has your ors, your and, uh, a minus for not, as I say, and the and is applied. Pretty typical uh, with that. Uh, and a number of advanced search options as well. Uh, some of these can get fairly esoteric. These are pretty obvious possibilities, as you, one would, as you might uh, see for this. You'll see for some of them they've got more possibilities than I could ever imagine using there. YouTube is pretty 
robust on one hand, yet doesn't have a lot of fluff uh, in terms of things that people are probably never ever going to use there. Uh, you're also going to find, related to the indexing of all of these, that many of them will have features that sound great uh, and are worth having, worth knowing about, but they may only apply to a rel relatively small portion of the database. For example, the geographic indexing that's available. Uh, when you have a video, if you put a video on there, have any of you d done any geotagging for these types of things? You can geotag your video so that someone wants to search for a particular area, they can find it. Uh, there, but uh, a relatively small proportion, I have no idea what the proportion is, but it's not gigantic uh, of those things do have that geotagging there. When it's available, that's great, and uh, especially if you don't need very high recall, you just want some examples of uh, that that can uh, work very well for you there. Um, the, uh, let's see, um, uh, Yahoo Video, with Yahoo Video, um, this takes another step in terms of index. I was really pushing this. I don't hear a whole lot about it, and I don't know how much is happening. But Yahoo, constr uh, I th and I think they were following some, uh, uh, some standards out there, but they really pushed uh, ways for publishers of video to apply a lot of metadata to their material that they're adding there. Uh, I haven't seen an indication that a lot of publishers necessarily jumped on the bandwagon with that, but at least there's a potential for more data, metadata, and more reliable metadata here uh, than you will find with some of these other video uh, things there. Pretty typical, minus to exclude a term, quotation marks for phrases there, and some advanced search uh, uh, things with this. The uh, uh, duration, many of the video search engines will have a duration option because you get tired of looking at those, it's only 30 seconds, one minute, minute and a half. You want to see something a little more substantive than that, uh, you have those options that are available to you there. Uh, also with regard to the quality of the data, going back to what I said about Yahoo with regard to images, those things that it partners with, you're going to have the content from those types of sources, very reliable sources like CNN and uh, BBC News are available with uh, that. So. Um, some of the video you can get to right from leaving the, uh, without leaving the page, and this is in that category of, depending on the particular engine, it may just be easier for you to use than it is uh, otherwise. Let's do uh, just uh, uh, something that's easy to type uh, there. Okay, I'll do it, yeah. There we go. Um, some of them, if you... Just click on this right there. You've got it right on your screen without leaving the screen. This makes the, the browsing of video fairly uh, easy to use. Uh, uh, there, I won't wait for that to uh, uh, come up there. But that, it falls in that category of ease of use in terms of how these vary and which will be useful to you there. Uh, Bing. Uh, Bing is composed of a rather different database because it really focuses in its videos on some of these major providers like Hulu. YouTube, MSN, MySpace, and so on. Uh, a good portion of the material that you're going to run across is going to be coming from that. And as a result with that, you'll see uh, uh, a, a somewhat different substance in terms of content uh, with all of this uh, with Bing. How many have been to Bing video? Okay, um, Just a couple heads going up now. And, uh, give it a try, uh, just like with doing a regular web search. Compare to them, see what you're getting after, uh, get your, can see what you're getting, and I think you'll see, as with other things, a lot of times there are going to be significant differences in the ones that come up uh, uh, first with this. And, uh, uh, but you also get a flavor just by trying it out, the kinds of things that are going to be there. Here we see, again, the more sort of commercial video from those kinds of sources uh, is what's going to be available with being there. But also look around <coughs> the uh, <coughs> uh, for categories, <coughs> you'll find a lot of these, depending what the topic is, a lot of these alternative tools will have specialized categories to work with. <coughs> and can, that can make a big difference in terms of sorting out the types of things that you uh, uh, want there. The, uh, um, in general, I recommend with any, of the, any search engine, matter of fact, any website, I have what, my call, uh, what I call my uh, Thomas's English Muffins approach to websites. What's Thomas's English Muffins motto? Everybody knows that. 
uh, nooks and crannies. The goodness is in the nooks and crannies there. And the same is true for websites. The goodness is often in the nooks and crannies. It's not sitting in the middle of the page flashing in big letters for you. The one thing that may be most useful to you is something tucked away in some corner. And some things you find, once you discover that it's there, that's when you go back to it. There. Now, again, going back to the olden days, print tools, uh, you relate to some of the things that were, are with print tools. It's that, because that one particular index has in the back seven different indexes, and one of those special indexes is something you only use once every five years. Just know it's important. The same thing with these. Look around, explore them, look in, look in the uh, nooks and crannies uh, there because it can really pay off in terms of getting the most out of these tools there. Uh, Truvio, is it, have, any of, have any of you used Truvio? Uh, Truvio, let me just take a look at it itself first. <clears throat> uh, Truvio uh, has, I'll just quickly click over to this one and give you some points here, uh, claims 350 million videos from video hosting sites, uh, si uh, such as YouTube type things, news, sports, and music sites, and very importantly, TV shows. Some of these options are pull down window to narrow your search by channel and so on there. Uh, pretty standard search box type things, ORs, minus, and is implied. Also, quite a few prefixes you can work with. How many of you use prefixes fairly frequently in Google? In title, all in title, and so on. Uh, same type of thing here. If you know about the prefixes, it can add to your efficiency uh, there. Uh, the catch is, as with so many things, these sound great. But that is basically based on metadata that, for many things, will not be present. But on the other hand, it doesn't do harm, any harm to try it. You're going to get, your results are going to have generally a very high precision. Your recall may not be very good. But if you don't need the high recall, you're just going for high precision. Try some of these things out there. Uh, I, you know, this would be one of those things. I would really have to be in a situation where I was dealing with video at least two or three hours a day, probably, before some of these would barely become significant for me. But if I were in that situation, then I would know, want to know those differences uh, in terms of what it can provide uh, for you there. So uh, the, um, 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 has some additional ones there that filter it uh, for, your, for your search terms there. And on the results page, you can, there's those narrowing things, as I mentioned, uh, with that. To, uh, look at this for just a second, and let's do a search on, uh, 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 I'll just go to Haiti earthquake on that one. Uh, now notice there's also this option here, channels. This is one of those nooks and crannies type things. Uh, a lot of people would not think to pull down that little window there. They just click on search. But you can start narrowing right away to channels and categories and shows. If you're looking for TV shows uh, there, you can do that. Or you can do with a more general search there. And notice the, uh, some of the options that are on the page in terms of narrowing. Uh, for one thing, by the, some of their more popular channels, this will enable you to say, okay, let's go for the types of things that would be in USA Today or some of the more local things, and so on. Uh, or you can, have, you can narrow by TV shows, categories, and uh, so on there. The, uh, uh, so type of thing, get to know it a little bit, poke around, find which ones are going to be useful to you, and then you can make use of those. So uh, let's see, uh, a little more specifically uh, for TV video, uh, two I'm going to introduce to you, and one is not for free. But I wanted to mention that because it's not for free, because there are tools out there, there are alternative tools that are not free. Uh, are any of you in a situation where you're following the press a lot with regard to your organization, where your organization is appearing in the press, on the news, and so sometimes. Yeah, this is designed for that type of situation. Uh, TV eyes, because they will monitor for you, and you know almost immediately if your, if your organization has been mentioned on, in, on TV. Uh, so uh, that's what it's all about there. And uh, uh, it indexes audio feeds by speech recognition. Now, that is a major technological advance. Now, it's not new. It's been happening for a matter of years now. Uh, but again, I, I'm old enough to think back to the olden days, 70s, 60s even, uh, there, uh, and how much we couldn't get. And we really are sort of spoiled these days in terms of what we can get. 
and doing you know, a quick comparison, I mean, when I worked at the reference desk, in those days, if somebody came to the reference desk and they said, I saw an article in Time a couple months ago, it mentioned such and such. Well, I could say, you know, it, well, if it just mentioned it, the chance of us being able to find it is pretty slim. Now, I already knew it was probably Newsweek instead of Time, and it wasn't two months ago, it was six months ago. There, you know how it does go there. But, um, the, uh, but it, was, it was one of those questions that I figured immediately, I wouldn't necessarily give up on it, but I figured immediately the chances of finding it are very slim. But now, think of TV programs where the transcripts are being automatically indexed by speech recognition. That means if something is mentioned in that, you can find out about it. And uh, uh, to, it, to me, it's really a powerful technology uh, there. Uh, the coverage here, uh, you know, it's not the entire world, but some good chunks of the world there. One that is free, though, is Blinks. How many have ever used Blinks? Blinks TV? Blinks is a really neat one. Uh, and I can spend a lot of time playing around with Blinks uh, with this. Let's go to it uh, there. Uh, it searches primarily TV, but some radio on there. Uh, now, we're, uh, I keep saying, they haven't changed their page there for about at least a year and a half or so. They've been advertising 35 million hours of video, which made me suspicious. But they do have some very current things as well there. So they, it's as, it's as, they just haven't bothered to change that number, which I would recommend that they do, uh, do re unless they're throwing away the old stuff, which I don't think uh, they are. Uh, let me just mention a few points, and then we'll look at Blinks a little bit. Uh, there, it's free. Uh, speech recognition terminology uh, uh, technology is being used there, plus med metadata, additional metadata as well. Typical searching keywords, Boolean, and so on. Uh, these are the types of things this includes. Now, when you look at that again, thinking back to days when this was very, very difficult to do, it really gives you a better appreciation. Think back occasionally of what you can do that you couldn't do 20 years ago for this kind of content. Uh, there, and uh, the uh, they have one little thing, the wall it, which um, is uh, neat. And the uh, uh, we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. And uh, they also provide an RSS link, so here you're getting an RSS feed related to new video that's indexed according to those uh, keywords and uh, so on. Uh, with blinks, here this is uh, uh, an example of it. This is what it's meant by the wall. See that? And uh, you can uh, click on any of these and see what's new. These are just the ones they have on the main page there. But the neat thing is this. Let's just stick to Haiti because there's a lot of video out there on that. Uh, and it's a short word uh, there. Uh, the wall that will appear now will be for that particular topic. So this is parallel to doing a search and getting a list of the top 10 results there. But what you're getting is a view of the top 10 videos where the wall go back there. Um, anyway, the wall should be there in a minute there. Uh, one little neat thing about this is when you say wallet, oh there it is, that's, uh, yeah. Um, what you can do is there's source down here and you can put this source on your web page. So for example, if in your organization you're tracking a particular topic and you could put this on a, your your organization portal, whatever, a link to here, so that they, um, on your page, would pop up this wall of current video on that very specific topic. Now, that type of thing is the type of thing we, you know, one ordinarily doesn't think of something to aim for along those lines, but once you realize that capability is out there, there are really lots of possibilities for that uh, uh, there. And then it really, because seeing it, the world visually uh, in that sense, has really gotten a much, to be a much more popular and typical uh, thing there, and it's uh, easy to uh, uh, take advantage of that and very popular uh, there. So uh, play around with, how many are going to go home and play around with links? Okay, put that on your list of things to do. It still counts as work, okay, <laughs> if you're still examining things that are relevant to your work there. But you'll find a lot of neat things uh, uh, in there. It's, it's one of my favorite uh, uh, sites to explore there. Uh, let's see, the um, <coughs> Hulu. How many use Hulu? This is probably the primary source for watching TV programs, right? Even exceeding uh, the uh, uh, TV for some people. There are there some people out there who are watching this kind of TV more here than they are otherwise. Uh, and it's interesting in terms of 
how this is all going all to shape out in terms of what's going to be available because of the cost and so on and how you're going to pay for it there. But I find watching that little 15 or 20 second or 30 second video that I have to put up with before I see the episode, very tolerable. And it, it's also very, uh, uh, makes it worthwhile for them to continue their existence with that. So I actually appreciate ads for that reason because it's those ads that make these kinds of things possible uh, with that. Uh, Hulu, lot, the big thing for Hulu is TV shows. Uh, some of them you watch within Hulu, but also for a lot of them you go out, uh, when you click on it, it takes you out to the website as well. Uh, and it sort of has a Netflix approach here as well. Did anybody have a queue set up for this? You set up, you know, like on Netflix, you have your list of things that they're going to send, send you next. Okay, these are the things you're going to view next. So you can set up which shows you want to view, and it'll uh, bring it up on your queue there. I, I haven't bothered to set one up, but it looks like it has some potential uh, there. Yeah. Uh, uh, I haven't found much. Now, I wouldn't want to say definitively because I ha simply haven't looked for it, but most of it is, is fairly, fairly recent there. The, most of the shows there, uh, uh, I watch The Office and uh, NCIS and so on, and so those naturally don't go back very far. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not going to have more of the retrospective things in there uh, as well. I mean, Lucy is here to stay forever and ever and ever, so I'm, I'm sure she's going to appear on there before long if it's, she's not already uh, uh, there. I think I'll go back and check that out because that sounds like a possibility there. Uh, just a quick look in terms of how these interfaces differ there. Um, how many use Hulu? Okay. Well, ah. Do the rest of you know you can watch TV when you want to watch TV? Okay, that's, that's what Hulu is all about there. It doesn't have everything, but uh, actually for the, you know, recent uh, shows and so on, it doesn't take uh, very long for them to, uh, uh, to get up there. And uh, the uh, uh, poke around here, they've got you know, the browsing is easy there. Uh, recently added collections, good place to go just to get a feel for the kinds of things that uh, are on there. Chuck Norris collections, so they've got some retrospective things uh, uh, there at least from that uh, uh, level, but British comedies pro those probably go back pretty far. So. Uh, okay, the um, uh, let's see. Take a look at an, let's take a look at another one. Have any of you ever used this one? This is pretty well unknown. Uh, it's been around for a while. Uh, this does several at the same time. But I put it down as a multimedia search engine. It, co it covers in one shot audio, video, and images. Uh, it refers to the audio part as music, and I've wanted to make a particular point. Music doesn't really mean music here. Uh, it's got music, but that's also, it has a lot of other stuff to have, uh, speeches, lectures, interviews, that kind of thing uh, with this. So it's, uh, uh, we'll take a look at it in just a minute. Uh, it's got pretty standard searchability there, narrow, things you can narrow down near the page there. It does have a downside, which I have some problems with. They very, very knowingly index a lot of BitTorrent, a lot of torrent material. That's where all those stolen books are out there and all the other stuff that is illegitimately uh, posted on the web uh, in violation of copyright. And they make no bones about it, but they, they say, that's your problem, not ours. Which is an interesting but not novel approach to all of this. Uh, but do be aware that you can get a lot of uh, uh, illegal material. There, uh, material with this without perhaps uh, uh, realizing. But it, it's a nice interface, pretty straightforward. And the fact that it does bring those three things together uh, makes it kind of uh, interesting and uh, I think gives it some uh, potential there. So if I do a uh, search on, the search bar, there's the search box there. Uh, let's do a search on, uh, uh, let's just do something a little more local here. Uh, and you'll see very, uh, quite a, you know, some things about the interface uh, are typical. I mean, that looks pretty typical, then, but as you poke around, you'll see some uh, uh, differences there. Uh, what they're doing is here's the audio, audio options, video uh, options for that search, and image options there. Now, I just took a very broad topic there, but it, it's a somewhat different approach to all of this, and, uh, you know, Whatever your 
feels right to you in terms of trying these out uh, uh, to see which, gonna, which ones you're going to be more comfortable using or knowing your way around, which ones do it the way you want it, uh, to do it there is what's going to make the difference with all of that. Um, that was Truvio. Uh, blogs and RSS, there is uh, um, <coughs> um, quite a bit out there in terms of searchability for these, and I'm not going to spend very long with these. I think you probably know a number of them. Uh, Technorati, Ice Rocket, Blog Lines, Google's own blog search out there. The, uh, uh, you'll find that uh, some of these tools do put together a combination of things. They're both a search and they're also a reader for RSS. They're particularly blog lines. Uh, how many of you use an, a specific RSS reader? What, what readers do you use? Sharp reader. I don't know that one. Google Reader? Google Reader. Yeah, the, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, you know, all do basically the same function with different layout and so on. And uh, in some cases, they're integrated here. Bloglines has a nice one there. And Google's blog, uh, blog, uh, own readers is kind of nice there. I want to also briefly show you Zulu uh, in this connection. Uh, Technorati is probably the best known. At least been probably been around for uh, longer than many that are out there. Uh, Ice Rocket, another one. Uh, just as with some of the other things we've looked at regarding video and uh, images and so on, uh, the, uh, uh, what they're going to cover and what they don't cover is going to vary. For example, Ice Rocket. With that, you're searching blogs, you're also searching the web, and you're also searching Twitter and MySpace. So you're getting some of those uh, uh, social networking sites uh, in with that. Technorati. Um, Technorati is, I talk to a lot of people, which that's their favorite tool for this, this kind of thing. For me, it, it, it just doesn't fit. Uh, you know, I, it takes me a while to figure out each time I go back to it because I'm done on it every day where I go and how to get to it and so on. I think they're a little bit disorganized and also they change like it seems like just when I get comfortable. That's what I'll see when I go to Technorati. Uh, they've changed it a bit there. But it's, it's a good tool and it's a favorite, a favorite uh, for a lot of people out there for searching in blogs. Now with most of these tools uh, you will see capabilities for searching either uh, blogs or individual posts. Searching for blogs, if you want to find out what is out there in terms of blogs that address a particular topic, I'm going to throw in boating here, and has 53 blogs relating to boating. But then if you wish, you can also do a search for posts, and it will find individual posts there, uh, 1,886,000. Big distinction in terms of these, so we, but it depends on what you're after. You're looking for a very precise topic. You're not going to find an overall blog one, perhaps. Uh, that gives you that option. That's one of the big options that's important uh, throughout these uh, blogs and RSS uh, tools there. Uh, blog lines, again, very well known. Uh, mostly blogs, but also covers uh, major news services and so on out there. Over 80 million messages. Uh, to use the reader as it would not be unexpected. You have to sign up to use the reader so they know who you are there. Uh, and uh, does pretty much all the standard things for RSS there, uh, as does Google Blog Search. Uh, most of these, not all things, will uh, allow you to search by author, by dates, and by language. Now, this is a good example of what I said early on about the fact that one of the reasons why these are important is they will allow you to search for a very specific category, a very specific criteria that a general web search engine is not just built to do, like posts and authors and those, those kinds of things uh, there. So it's a reason for keeping those uh, in mind there. Uh, Zulu, how, how many have ever used Zulu? A uh, couple of you there. Uh, Zulu, uh, first of all, it is not what I think of as a meta search engine. Meta search engines are those tools like Dogpile, which promise, hey, we'll search 500 search engines for you but they have some very definite failings. Typically, you'll only get 10 or 20 things out of it, uh, of any of it, your search engine. The majority of them do not search in Google and do not search Yahoo. Uh, and there are a number of other weaknesses with them. Some of them will give you ads first. If they do search Google, what you're going to see are the Google ads first. So I am very much an anti-meta search person. This isn't really a meta search, although, it's, although it looks like it, or at least it does something that it, the others don't have a failing to do. Uh, here, when you do a search, and let's just do uh, across the border there, uh, just to throw in a word there. Uh, when you do a search, you can choose any of these, and I pulled it up now because we're talking about blogs. And when you do a blog search, 
you will see as much as you want for exactly the way the records themselves will look like. You won't see ads, and you won't see some of the additional things there, but in terms of you'll get the exact records you'd get if you went to that tool itself. Uh, and you can say, okay, there's what's in Google, mentioning Virginia. Here's what's in Technorati, mentioning Virginia. Ice Rocket, blog lines, Twitter, and blog posts. So it's a, I find this a good tool. I use this often when I'm comparing search engine results. Instead of going to Google and see how many got in this topic and then going together, this, since this tr those truly give me the same answers that I've been getting in those, this is a nice way to do a comparison of searches in any of those categories that Zulu covers. Uh, uh, web, images, video, news, blogs, uh, there. So anyway, that's Zulu. Uh, podcasts, I'm not going to say a whole lot about podcasts. Uh, pod people were a lot more excited two or three years ago about, blog, about podcast searches than they are now. I hardly ever hear anybody get excited about a podcast search there. Uh, three or four years ago, there were at least six podcast search engines out there. And right now, I think these are about the only ones that are out there. How many of you ever searched for a podcast on a particular topic? Okay, not surprising. That's what I say. It doesn't excite people a lot there. Uh, on the other hand, if, if you are, for example, if you're commuting to work and you're recording podcasts so you can listen to them on the way to work and you want to find some podcasts on a particular topic, these are good places to go. Just put in your topic, see what's out there, and then you sub, uh, sub can typically, through the search engine, also subscribe to those podcasts uh, so you can get them as you want there. Okay. Um, News. Now we could spend an entire day, maybe even an entire week on news, so I'm just going to mention very briefly some of the things that are out there. Uh, Yahoo News, uh, 7,000 sources in 35 languages. Uh, you're getting news from their partners, the ones that have partnered with, the big ones, AP and so on. Their Agence France Press, Washington Post and so on. Uh, typical advanced search page for news, likewise with Google News Search. N in terms of searchability, not a whole lot out there. How come Yahoo only has 7,500 sources. What I said, 7,000, 7,500. This was 25,000. That's because Google counts all those blogs. Those are mostly blogs that are counting uh, for that large number. In a way, it's like what they do with images. And if it looks at least bit like it's news, it's news to them there. Uh, one I will mention, Silo Breaker. How many have ever used Silo Breaker? This is one I, I really love this one here in terms of news. As it says, in the, it's just, I took that description directly from uh, the Silo Breaker site. Uh, they try to put the news in context. Now, by context, uh, you really won't understand what it is till you poke around in this just a little bit here. Uh, if I do a search on, let's do, um, uh, uh, let's see. well, I'll tell you what, something you haven't heard much about lately. Uh, health care. Notice this. This pops up. They, they've identified, the, they built in some metadata construction there. Uh, health care as a key phrase that basically it's saying, that it's saying that's part of their controlled vocabulary with that. And if we do a search on that, notice what we're getting here. Now, as you poke around with this, this is very much a nooks and crannies site. Although it's got it, it's well designed, so you can see what you're getting uh, pretty easily. But notice the network hotspots and trends type things that you have there. You notice some, there's some categories uh, there that you can narrow things down. Okay, um, the uh, so it's going to give uh, your some basic just a basic search, just a couple things up there. But notice on the right what you're getting in focus. Now these are things that these little icons are. Or you probably can't see it there. These are people associated with this topic. These are companies associated with this topic based on the news, based on their analysis of news articles and prevalence of terms, names, and so on in the news. Uh, these are people, or rather organizations associated with it. And as a matter of fact, and it, the design's really nice with this. You hold your cursor over there, you've got immediate, quick access to a little more detail. Uh, on that, uh, the um, uh, places associated with it, countries associated with it, uh, key terms associated with it, industries associated with it, and so on. Uh, especially if you're looking at a topic that you're maybe not that conversant in, but somebody you know, comes along and says, hey, I really need to find out something on this topic. 
this does give you that news and context where you can say, oh yeah, these companies, how's that company involved? Click on the company and it will tell you right uh, immediately how that company is involved there. Uh, let's see, let Harris Interactive. How are they involved in this whole picture? That's how they're involved in the whole picture. The, the snippet that they give you will give you a sense of this. Instead of going through dozens and dozens of news articles and trying to figure out who are the players here, this really does allow you to do that. This is a really good tool to use. Uh, it used to be available only for, through a subscription, it, but for about three years now, four years now, it's been available for free. I really recommend getting to know this if you're interested in news in context with this. And that's Silo Breaker. Yeah, in a way, except a lot easier to use, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Use. yeah. It makes those kinds of connections. Yeah, those kinds yeah. Of connections. And it sort of, in a way, connects the dots, therefore, yeah. Yeah, social science citation index yeah, is, is an interesting contrast and, and comparison there because uh, you're right, it's, there are definitely parallels there. So, uh, News Now, just to mention one from the UK, this is really nice. Anybody ever use News Now? Uh, News Now, one of the things I like about it is it really has uh, the, uh, um, uh, on the left here, see these categories? Uh, it allows for easy browsing. You can do the searching, but you can also do a lot of easy browsing on the left here. If I go, for example, for, let's go for science. Here are categories here, uh, particle physics, and so on. These are pretty specific fact categories to find on a news site out here. But if you're interested in biotechnology, this is a great place to go. They've got the, or it already pulled together for you. I mean, think of each of these as its own little news service. Here's their news service on biotechnology. Matter of fact, if you look at it this way, you could just bookmark the URL for that particular part. You've got your own little news service there. On the, the specificity of these categories, I think, is it, particularly a strong point uh, with this. Okay, the, uh, let's see, uh, EU, an EU perspective on the news. This is done by the EU, uh, and it gives you a European perspective uh, there. And uh, 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 so I'll just mention that uh, if you're th thinking about things from that perspective there. Another category, discussion groups. Uh, discussion groups, I, the way I look at it, when you need to see the subjective side of things, whether it be the on politics, travel, people, products, technology, whatever, don't forget to check out the discussion groups. Web come home to, you know, the individuals and people being to easily express it. These discussion groups are great places to go if you want to follow those discussions. A lot of junk out there and a lot of people who don't have a real life, as you know, if you spend much time in these discussion groups, but uh, there are a lot of good commentary out there as well, and particularly sites that review uh, travel type things and so on. And these discussion group search engines are good places to find that. Uh, instead of uh, uh, you know, go, going to travel advisor and poking around and so on, uh, jump in here, put in a place, whatever, you get messages from a lot of discussion groups. The, the people who do it were other boards sometimes, I think, when they pick out their names for this. Anybody, ever, has anybody used Omgili? It stands for, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Just what you would have guessed, right? there. Uh, that's Omgili, or Omgili, or however you pronounce it. I'm sure there isn't a definitive uh, uh, definition or different uh, pronunciation of that. Uh, but this is a nice one here. Uh, let's try, uh, again, these are discussion groups. I'm just going to throw in a term. You notice that it does have advanced search option there. Here, and it will give me a, a, a buzz graph. You know, you can see a variation, particularly if you're looking for a political topic or something you want to find out, you know, where the peaks are and whether or not there's much discussion going on, it's uh, good there. The, uh, 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 but, and then you have a more typical uh, search result here. Uh, this covers, uh, what did I say, how many, uh, uh, 100,000 forums. You're covering a lot of territory with the search on this. I really like Umgeely. It's uh, uh, a nice one uh, there. Uh, it's not the only one out there. One that's been around for uh, longer than that is uh, Board Reader. And these are, both of these are searchable under very typical things. Uh, Umgeely has more search capability overall uh, than Board Reader does with Umgeely. If I go here to the advanced search page, uh, 
you see quite a lot of capability there. Again, one of those things, the more you get to know it, the more those are going to be significant to you. But once you do, you can really just quickly, efficiently, and effectively fine tune your search to what you're after. And uh, I mean, these, and the discussion groups, they, again, if it's important, if you're in a situation where people are talking about your organization, so on, you need to know about the discussion. If your organization has a product, to know what people are saying about your particular product. Uh, you don't want to be blindsided with something that someone come along. Find out about it as it's in the discussion groups out there. So uh, let's see, the uh, search engines for searching for people. Uh, there are a lot of problems that are complications that arise when you're searching for people. Uh, most of the material that's out there may be in the deep web, which means a regular search engine is not going to cover it. And I'm going to show you one search engine in a minute that will cover a significant amount of the deep web automatically. Um, and uh, the, um, makes it quite easy to get into this. How many have used Pipple or People actually pronounced People, P-I-P-L-E? Anybody ever use that? It, it's a really neat one. I really like it there. Uh, the, uh, uh, it covers a lot of deep websites. And what that means in this particular case is this. They are programmed. As you know, deep web search engines when they hit a website that has a search box, the search engine doesn't know what to do it, with it. So if the con main content of that website is in a database and you have to go to there to search it, search engines can't do that. Well, they're programmed to do that. So they've created little sub-programs for these various sites. They've pro created a program that will take your search term and go into Facebook and do that search and bring back the results. They'll do it will go into MySpace. They'll go into LinkedIn and do those uh, searches there. Uh, the, uh, and let me just give you a quick example of people. I'll use myself as an example here, not out of vanity, but rather than rent. If I, anybody's going to be embarrassed, it's better that I be embarrassed than uh, uh, somebody else there. Uh, Uh, with these search, these, any of the people search, this particular one, I recommend that uh, you, if it's a fairly uncommon name, don't put in the locality because one of the things you could do, you're doing with that, you're narrowing it down. If you want to find out places somebody has lived other than the current place, uh, not narrowing it down to locality will help there. But they're going to a lot of, the, there's one called some of the directories like White Pages, Zaba Search uh, there, uh, background reports. And you'll notice places I've lived there. Uh, neither of these are me there. Uh, I, uh, anybody in here named Randy? OK, I can say this. I've always tried to keep people from calling me Randy. Because as you know, in British, that means lewd, lascivious, and lusty, which takes an awful lot of energy. So, uh, so uh, call me pretty much anything but that. Uh, email addresses there. Uh, it's a pretty good on email letters. It goes over into the public records type things there. Uh, profiles there, uh, some professional and business sites, publications, web pages, blog posts there, uh, other documents that are out there, programs and stuff and so on. Uh, when you go home, try yourself in there. I think you may be impressed with the kinds of things or scared by the kinds of things that uh, uh, are in there that people w uh, will bring to you there. Yes? Is there a top down? Uh, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. You'd have to, uh, man, there may be for the individual sites it goes to, but you'd probably have to hit all of those there for that. I don't think people will op opt you out there. Are you hiding something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, though, a little more specifically, it automatically covers LinkedIn. But LinkedIn, with 60 million people now, that's a nice place to go for people, and more and more people are joining that and you, you get a little more searchability by going directly to LinkedIn uh, because you can search by company and, and other connections that are there so uh, it itself becomes a search engine there. Uh, so real quickly uh, some visualization and clustering tools out there, more, actually more visualization tools. Uh, this I'm kind of worried about. Uh, there were four that I usually talked about and in the last four, six months or so, well maybe the last nine months or so, two of them disappeared. Grokker's gone out of business, and Car2, just a month or two, uh, went out of business there. Uh, the uh, ones that are out there now, TouchGraph, and this often takes three or four minutes to load, so I won't do a special search on it, but I'll just go to the main page here, and you can see what, uh, uh, what it looks like when you do it there. 
Uh, it presents, this is an example here, it presents a diagram like this, which if you do a search on a particular topic, you will see it making the connections. You click on some of these connections, it reorganizes itself. Uh, how many of you used Google Touch Graph? Anybody? Play around, it's a really neat one to play around with. It, first time you use it, it's gonna have to download the Java, install Java for you, or a particular version of Java, whatever. But it's a real nice one to play around with uh, there to see how web pages are connected. And it goes back to that idea of context as well. Some of the connections you don't see, for example, you see suddenly, well, why is this particular website pulling up there? What's the connection between it and the websites that I've been looking for, uh, those, identifying those connections is important there. And uh, another like that is Quintura. Uh, it do doesn't do it as fancy. It does a little cloud of concepts, and you click on the clouds, parts of the cloud there to see what's uh, uh, what there. And we already mentioned Zulu, uh, just to mention that it uh, uh, covers not just the blogs that we looked at, but others, others as well. Ah. Okay. Uh, how many saw some new things? <laughs> I would certainly hope so there. Uh, the, uh, some of because some of those are simply not well known. I would recommend that you play around with them. That's the best way to get to know them. And just remember those capabilities are out there. Uh, and if you, know, if you think you ha might have a need for uh, discussion groups, spend a couple minutes with two or three of them there. See what the search is and see what they'll do for you. Get to know them. And because it's like any tool. Uh, woodworking tools to you know why you have 12 different kinds of saws and what each of them does you're not going to be able to work as well with them but when you know that that one tool particular kind of saw is exactly what I need for this particular kind of task that's when you really get the most of it and that's when your results can be uh, likewise precise and uh, and fruitful there questions yes <laughs> um, I uh, subscribe to uh, uh, quite a few blogs, or uh, and, uh, and, and oh, yes, seeing if you're paying attention there, uh, the uh, 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 and uh, RSS feeds and so on, like Gary Price's resource guide and Tara Kalachain's uh, uh, his, his resource shelf, Tara Kalachain's and so on. Found out a lot about a lot of them there. Uh, it's it, I find that a lot of the time. Unless I've seen it a couple times, I don't bother going to it. There's so much that is new. And so many things I hear about, I'll never hear about again. I just don't have the time to follow up on every single one. So if something tends to pop up two or three times, there. Or I can take it from the direction, if I need to see what's really out there in the way of search engines that are desperate, this particular type of thing, I'll do a search on that. So that those are the kind of two approaches I take uh, with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's still uh, that was created by Danny Sullivan. Uh, Danny Sullivan, Sullivan is still there, but he no longer. Uh, Search Engine Watch was bought by another organization, uh, and Danny Sullivan left, and he created another one called Search Engine Land. Uh, Search Engine Watch is much more now focused on SEO, search engine optimization. So they're doing it much more from the web design end than the user end. Uh, Search Engine Land also spends quite a bit of folk, puts up quite a bit of focus on the SEO side of things, but it, it puts significantly more focus than the other one did on search engine users. So, so it, it's searengineland.com that uh, it's taken over. That's where Danny Sullivan is now. Uh, what would you recommend for searching um, something like a, a document number or sometimes a product name? Oh. There, there are mm -hmm. uh, different components, you know, alphanumeric components that ah. No, I can't, because I think the best approach is probably what you're doing is try it two or three different ways. Yeah. Just make, try to figure out where the breaks would be and so on. Try it all together and if you try, you know, put it in quotation marks with the alpha space and with the hyphens there to allow for that being there. Um, I think that's going to be your best bet. The good news is, yes, there may be two different reports in the world with that same number, but there are not going to be 2,000 reports in the world with that same number. So you, you, if you hit on it, you've probably got it. You know what I mean? I know, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Sometimes Hard to hit on it. Sometimes, uh, I find I get the best luck with a 
maybe a substring that oh. five numbers maybe? Yeah. You know, if it's report nine, six, two, two, three. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. If, if I see both letters and numbers yeah. in the same substring, mm -hmm. that's yeah. almost a surefire bet. Mm -hmm. But if it's just, you know, report, you know, two, two, one, one, two. Yeah. Everybody uses one, one, two. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Is there a, a hardware, software reason why we can't make that Yes, it's more a matter of how much effort they're going to put into it. Because with phone numbers, Google does make an effort to contract it so that 703255 is out there as three separate units, but it's also out there as a single unit. So when you search on that number, you're going to be able to get it either way. And it doesn't make that kind of effort with regard to report numbers and so on. And I don't know of any that focus on that particular thing. But uh, I don't know, and maybe, maybe some of you know, may, uh, a search engine that focuses on technical reports. I, I don't know of uh, one. There, the search engines for their own content, you mean? Or maybe NTIS for a little broader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think my guess is probably as broad as you're going to go is something like NTIS uh, there, and uh, but not something that's a little bigger. Well, on the other hand, indeed, I have had enough luck with just jumping in with a number, and maybe trying it two or three different ways, and actually finding something that uh, it often makes it worthwhile to give it, though, even, even though the probability is not high. The payoff is high enough if it does happen to be there. So, oh. um, is more of a uh, mindset and a library of content that you want to put out of the online collection? Mm -hmm. Have you looked at any other industries where people will build a content, like a, a type of search engine to kind of help people get into the collection, how um, collections more popular and have this power for? I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, for example, there are a few out there uh, for pictures of uh, uh, images uh, that are very specialized in terms of the kind of image and their own collection that are out there. I can't think of any at the moment. There's one Australian, one Australian wildlife or something like that. With their collection, they have it online there. Uh, I, I don't hear a whole lot about that happening, but I hear enough about that happening that I think that you are going to see more and more um, uh, of that. Uh, one thing you could also, you know, hope for is uh, the way of technical reports. There is a resource guide. Uh, I don't remember what it is. A collection of it, it's a resource guide with links to several hundred technical reports collections. So there are no technical reports collections in that website, but it has links to organizations that have those technical reports uh, collections there. But uh, I think you're going to see more of that. It, it's getting easier and easier for an organization to uh, to do that. So. <laughs> yeah. solutions out there. You can, but don't assume that you're going to be able to completely search it. it it's very much like the people search. They're, it's going to be selected, the ones that where they can get an agreement from uh, Facebook, from
from MySpace, from LinkedIn, so that they can go in there and their robots will not be, their crawlers will not be blocked. Uh, they're going to have to have those permissions there, but uh, y no place where you can, you know, I don't, I can't think of any even relatively specific subject area where I can say, yeah, that's covered, and you can do a search of that. In many cases, you're still going to have to go to the website itself to do the search. I mean, I've, I've tried deep sea, couldn't, wasn't really impressed by it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't do a complete study mm -hmm. of it or anything. But there are, are there, are there search sites that, that do the deep web? Uh, not, uh, only in specific areas. Yeah, in like pe like people search, and uh, there are some. Um, there are um, uh, there have been some attempts made, and I can't remember which ones there are. There have been some attempts made to do it on a large uh, scale, and there are some firms. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of uh, maybe it's deep, deep Web Technologies. I think it is that focuses on software that will allow you to do that. Uh, and they've done, uh, who is it that does, uh, it's the government science, uh, yeah, right, yeah, and uh, uh, that, that one, they, they do that one, and they do a number, for a number of other organizations, so they tackle it from there, and I, I think do it pretty effectively there. Yeah? What would you consider a stumbling across? Uh, a category, it, it, it's sort of, uh, I'd consider it a serendipity engine, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you you know if you're you know just want to wander, and I think it's fine. I've never spent a significant amount of time with it. You know, I know some the people who love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the materials that you get to are just you just don't get to with yeah. any of the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's like browsing a, a a collection. You're sometimes you really get gems you just aren't going to find through the catalog. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so it's yeah, I'd say if you, if you're getting good stuff out of it, keep going at it. So. The questions. Yes. Uh, finding women to your maiden name. Ah. Is that, have you explored that at all? Yes. Um, I've explored it without any luck at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um, um, I was trying one that somebody that somebody I knew thirty years ago. I thought, okay, let me try her name, and I ran across uh, her picture in her uh, sorority yearbook by searching for her maiden name because there's a, uh, there's a website out there specifically in yearbooks. You have to subscribe to it and so on. And, but that's the first, you know, that was the most obscure thing that I found that I wasn't going to find. But most time, yeah, I just bomb out uh, on that. So, other questions? I, 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 I'm just guessing the answer to this. My guess is no, uh, uh, unless you, you save it, and uh, the, uh, uh, because you're not going to be sure that it's going to be out there. So, uh, so that's what, what I recommend. Actually, anybody in the legal area? If, if I'm not either, either but uh, uh, I have a friend who plays one on television. Uh, the, uh, uh, now, if I wanted something that I think I wanted, might have, w w want to go back to, uh, I would make, I would download the appropriate pages from that web my, for website myself because somebody could claim that it never said that on that particular day. So in situations like that, if it's important that you have a record of it, you're going to have to archive it yourself, I think. So. Okay. Should we call it quits? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.